In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a spectrophotometer. So I have a 1 to 4 dilution and a 1 to 2 dilution. And these are special cuvettes made of a glass that does not have a lot of interferences in the spectrophotometer. So the tubes that we use to make our samples often have imperfections due to scratches or the quality of the glass. So it's best practice to use cuvettes that are designed for spectrophotometers. I have distilled water in order to rinse the cuvettes between samples or when I am finished, as well as Kim wipes to wipe the outside of the cuvette and a decant bucket to discard any solutions. So this spectrophotometer has two settings, an absorbance setting and a transmittance setting. And we can tell we're in absorbance when this red light is lit and we're in transmittance when this uh, T is lit. And to switch between them, we press the mode button. Usually you want to be in absorbance mode, so we're going to stay in that. And the first thing we do when we use the spectrophotometer, we want to make sure that we're on the correct wavelength. So this spectrophotometer has a dial to adjust the wavelength that you can turn. For this particular die, I want it at 600, but it will change depending on what you are measuring. Now that we have the correct wavelength set, we can fill the cuvette with distilled water. Often you will be asked to blank the instrument before measuring your samples. A lot of times that blank solution will be plain water or saline. Sometimes it is a dilution of the reagent you're using. For this particular one, we're going to use water. You wanna make sure that it's filled with at least three mLs of solution so that when the light goes through the spectrophotometer, it does not go over the top of the solution and falsely elevate the absorbance readings. And then before putting it in the chamber, I'm going to wipe it with a Kim wipe to remove any surface uh, particles or, or droplets that might be on there as well as any fingerprints. Then I lift the chamber door and gently insert it and push it down. And then close the chamber door. At that point, I can press the 0A or 100% T button, and that will blank the instrument. Now that the instrument is blanked, I can remove this cuvette, and I'll leave this over to the side in case we need it again. Now we can transfer the contents of one of our samples to be measured into a cuvette. Pouring is sufficient. And then wipe it with a Kim wipe and insert it into the chamber and close the door. You'll notice on these spectrophotometers, there is no leading zero. It's important to record leading zeros when we record our absorbances in order to avoid uh, misinterpreting the number later on when we're doing calculations. So I am going to record for my absorbance 0 0.899 for this sample. And it's normal for that number to fluctuate a little bit. And then we never discard our solutions until we are sure that our experiment has worked. At this point, I can take the distilled water and rinse the cuvette and pour it into the decant bucket. And I want to gently tap out the extra liquid. Not every drop needs to be out. And then I'm ready to transfer the next solution. Take a clean Kim wipe 
and wipe the outside. Close the chamber door and record the absorbance. This particular model of spectrophotometers does max out absorbance at numbers greater than 1.999. If that happens, you will see one dot dash dash dash. If that happens, please record that as greater than two. If you get a negative absorbance, you would record that as zero. Then I can transfer this back to its original container and rinse the cuvette. For this particular series, I went one to four. I measured the one to four or the more dilute sample and then the one to two. I could have elected not to rinse the cuvettes between samples because I was going from the lowest concentration to the highest concentration. You can do that with standards when you know the concentrations. When you're using controls or testing your patient sample, you would need to rinse between each sample since you don't know which samples are high and which samples are low. And when we're done and we've checked our values and done our calculations, if everything looks good, we can then decant our solutions into the waste bucket and discard our glass tubes into the biohazard trash. The cuvettes do not get thrown away and instead they are cleaned and used again.